Hello, everybody. Um, so I'm I'm kind of alone here, but actually it's a game team. I represent the game team, and so I like please game team say hello. Yeah. yeah. So and if if any of you want to say something at some point, just tell me and, and uh, grab the mic. So yeah, basically, okay, we we were hoping at some point that we'd release Game 3 for LGM, but it didn't happen. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's not there. It's very close. We still have bugs and crashes and stuff. Like we are really on the last, last uh, stroke to um, Game 3. So, well, so the, just one slide for the um, Game 210, which is our current stable release. So basically right now we are in a state where we even said we stop backporting features. Like it, we just released like what last week, uh, do 10, two, two, 10, uh, 38, which might be our last actually in the 210. Maybe we'll do a 210 40 uh, if we find some annoying bugs that uh, we want to fix because some people so always like have stay long on on series, uh, especially on Linux, because it's a stable uh, distribution concept, uh, especially LTS. Uh, so sometimes some people may stay on 210 for uh, a few more years. I don't know. So that's a, the stable release branch. So now the uh, interesting part is uh, Game 3. Uh, that's what we are working on. So like the main thing, on, I mean, not the main thing, one of the main thing in game 3 was uh, moving to GTK 3. Uh, so that's also why uh, the 3 is GTK 3 and GTK 2 was game 2, all the 210, 210 to 8 to 6 and everything. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if you know what's the origin of GTK, of course. What the G means in GTK, it means GIMP and GIMP Toolkit. So uh, that originally comes from our project from a time long before I. So like GTK3 by itself, uh, even though we had to add some work above it, but brings us a bunch of uh, like better graphics uh, tablet support, uh, especially like it's kind of same, but hot plug, for instance, it's uh, in GIMP2, all the two, uh, you have the annoying stuff that you had to have your tablet plugged before starting GIMP. If you started, uh, so if you plugged after starting GIMP, uh, it will work as a mouse, but you won't have pressure sensitivity, this kind of stuff. So, like uh, I work with Ariam, she does uh, like uh, uh, classes, uh, university with GIMP, and it's always kind of uh, a bit like uh, embarrassing when the the, ah, the pressure doesn't work. Like, oh, did 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 you uh, did you plug uh, the tablet before or after starting GIMP? You know, like. This game, like, you know. So that's a, a kind of a little detail, which actually are not so much uh, little details. Um, well, we'll have touch support. We kind of have in a few places, but we don't have like fancy touch support yet. It won't be for game three. The fancy, uh, like, you know, like moving your, uh, we have rotation, but not with uh, fingers. We you still rotate with, with like uh, control and the uh, middle click and like this kind of rot converse rotation or zoom, but uh, we don't have yet, but eventually we can since with GTK3. Uh, well, better high uh, pixel density uh, spot, uh, dis you know, displays, uh, especially for icon and everything. People have a very small uh, uh, icons on the huge 4K monitors. Uh, like with Game Streets, uh, much less a problem, even though there's still a few issues like fractional scaling and everything. So there's still. It's still not perfect, but uh, it's a lot better. Yeah. Well on support uh, for people uh, who use Linux, even though it still doesn't have color uh, colorimetry. So that's for actually we don't use well on on a day-to-day -day basis uh, for production. But uh, uh, but well, eventually it will go there. And with GTK3, it's it's a na native uh, well on support and uh, uh, and Carlos around here, yeah, here also uh, uh, brought us, so it's still, it's related to Elan, but in, in Linux we have the concept of tablet pad uh, interaction, which uh, like basically, um, you know, like what people used to do is like, uh, so you have like a shortcut, you configure a shortcut like uh, 
control uh, control A select everything. Okay, so what you used to do is like you 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 configure like this button on your tablet pad to make a control A, but now with uh, this it's only on the Wayland. Uh, you can configure the button to do the action. So not not needing to map a, a shortcut basically. So, uh, which is uh, much nicer, it's kind of more semantic. You, it's the button does this action, not the button does a shortcut, which does, uh, okay. So yeah, that's this kind of stuff. Um, so Space Invasion is our project for like color correctness. So we have uh, in GIMP, uh, we have this, uh, the Giggle project and Babel project, which are two libraries which were born out of the GIMP project. And like, uh, well, they were born like I think nearly at the start because if you look at the Git log, it's like also like twenty something years ago for the first commits. Uh, but we st it started to be really integrated like fifteen years ago with two two eight a bit, two ten a bit more, three or even more, and like and it's basically what it means is that we have more and more uh, correct colors uh, because of more much better support uh, for. Um, uh uh like various formats and uh and like also like uh, it's also it makes the code a lot more maintainable because colors now are semantic in our code before this we had like to move bytes and like try to keep uh like the, the um, uh, meaning somewhere in comments or something or just know as that when we only move this in this color space or whatever now is the color is like a color it, it brings its own semantic and it's it's a lot much nicer code i think pippin wrote me something that i ah, yeah, like the uh the float um uh so everything internally is doing mostly in, in float uh, computation and uh pippin is uh, which is the maintainer of uh, gaggle Unfortunately, could not come in today. Um, he, he did a lot of work on optimization, and he does a lot of work actually on small embedded devices and everything. So he really cares about optimization. So it's very it's fast stuff, and like we have very fast. We have, uh, as you were saying, that a lot of uh, type of uh, stuff which are actually faster with the float uh, implementations, and when we do is. Uh, U8 uh, integer 8-bit eight, eight uh, integer computation like uh, with with Gaggle. So a lot of stuff are like very very good, very fast. And we have some early CMYK implementation, but it's like for export stuff. Uh, eventually, what we want is have CMYK backend, um, which means like your image can be like stored in CMYK with CMYK semantic and everything. That's also some some big work which was uh, brought also into Gaggle and then into GIMP, and um, yeah. So that's it. We have uh, UX improvements like the uh, multi-layer selection. So I know that sometimes I say this. Sometimes some people say, "But that, that's basic stuff." But for GIMP, it was a huge thing because basically the whole code base was assuming that they uh, they can be only one layer selected at, at uh, one time at one point in time so basically uh, i worked on this for like six months or something like that just like to to have uh, like all codes uh, be able to expect that it's possible that there are several uh, layers selected what what happens then uh, that's this kind of stuff and uh, the floating selection was like a concept uh, which actually is powerful in some cases but in a lot of cases some people don't understand and it's just like one step additional so people will use gimp maybe you know what the floating selection is you know when you do a control uh, a copy paste uh, and then we have like this intermediary thing which is a floating selection instead of having directly a paste into a new layer or something like that and um and yeah soft proofing also there was some improvement we now have a small welcome dialogue after an update uh, of GIMP, which can also, there's a checkbox, you can keep it at every start because it's also has uh, this part where you can just create new image from here, or open uh, previous images, this kind of stuff. So, uh, okay, I don't remember with what demo I wanted to do for this. So, so there's a, uh, wait, what demo? 
Yeah, ma, it's okay. Non-destructivity thing. Uh, like so. Okay, that's something we at some point we we were like this. Uh, well, okay, three zero is uh, like this, and three two uh, will have non-destructive uh, layer effects. Uh, but uh, in the end, uh, someone just implemented this in three zero. I mean, the whole backend was has already been there or like built by like dozen of other developers uh, for years and years, uh, including Mitch, uh, who is my comment now also could not make it unfortunately today, did a lot of work. So it was just like, the last part was the UI basically, and which is not finished, but like we thought it was good enough for Game 3 because it's just so huge. So um, yeah, and we have more non-destructive editing in the future, but like that's already one huge step and this, like this is a demo. Uh, so basically, here it's uh, okay. It's it's a text with hello world, and uh, with mouse. Okay. So. Ah, uh, okay. But okay. Oh, yeah. And like, oh, sorry. I don't know why. <laughs> So uh, the, the text is, I can, yeah, I should. okay. So I yeah. just edit it live because it's actually, okay. I don't see where is my mouse. It's actually a layer effects here there that I added in, in advance. So like one is whatever it's called. And uh, so like, it's just text. It's just a, a no, ah, sorry. It's just a, a simple text, okay simple text layers with effects above it. So it means you can uh, just uh, switch them on, off, and uh, you can type stuff. It's 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 all, well, it's layer effects. You'd know this from other softwares, but like for GIMP, it's huge because we, until now people US had like to, to bake the effect. So a lot of people, what they used to do is, most people, most professional, what they used to do is like make a copy before the effect in case they want to change stuff. But here now you can like, I mean, in fact, you can also like, of course, I don't show this, but you can edit, edit the effect. Okay, I have no idea where the mouse is. Okay, here. So I just do random stuff, but like, you know, like, okay, stuff happens. So. Of course, you can uh, just, uh, you know, just, so it's, yeah, non-destructive stuff. So you can edit the effect and everything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, that's right now you saw there was a little like small pop-up. What we want eventually is more like having the effect like a small tree above the layer which has the effect. So you could also have several effects. And of course, I didn't show this, but uh, effects have a mask. Uh, uh, like for instance here in this example, uh, we see the so mask thumbnail here. And so here is the effect is only a part of the screen, uh, same as layer mask and everything. Uh, this the mask already exists so except that right now you cannot edit it eventually we want to be able uh, to edit the mask also of course like just like you edit already your mask so that's the uh, spec uh, what we want to do eventually um, yeah so a lot of stuff like we worked a lot on the updated uh, uh, API which is uh, so, well, all plugins will break, uh, like the two game two something plugins, because we, we moved to like a major version. So we thought, okay, that's a time where we want to break uh, API if, if any time, because we are like, we are very conservative. So we don't actually break API often. Like the, normally the, the wall of the two series, uh, so like 20 years, uh, your plugin may have deprecation warnings, but they won't. They should still work if you re rebuild them, uh, and that should be the same for Game Three. But between Game Two and Game Three, plugins will be updated. So, uh, uh, so and some of the stuff we worked is like a lot of the Git generation stuff. So actually, like there are a lot of plugins where we removed uh, 
uh, hundreds of lines and replaced by like a five line and it's the same UI because it's generated from properties of uh, the plugin, like kind of stuff. Now we have bindings, so with G-object introspection um, for people who are in GNOME community, it's like this technology which uh, uh, introspect uh, from C libraries, from C uh, API uh, the into like, so we we can have a lot more, but that's the one basically where we, which we tested and now we work and we even have a demo, a demo uh, plugin for uh, Python 3, Lua, JavaScript, Vala. And I think someone even like worked on a Rust uh, binding, uh, but it didn't uh, commit it yet. And uh, Script 2 is special. This is the only thing which is legacy and improved a lot, but doesn't use the object introspection. And Gaggle operation, uh, no, like Gaggle operation, like very much first class citizens, they can like Gaggle operations are filters. So basically it's layer effects. So there's uh, something very big, which I didn't say about the layer effects, which is like, you don't have like a small stupid list of 10 effects. Okay. So any Gaggle operation is an effect. So it means like anyone can make the effects. I, and just like, I don't know how many, uh, uh effects we have by default in Gaggle, but you have like dozens of them like uh, and and like people uh actually the one which i just showed before was uh like the uh, Gaggle style stuff is like someone who was making a lot of effects who still makes a lot of effects and this one was in the end like cleaned up and included as as Gaggle effect but it was like so but before this, it was external. So uh, yeah, so that's that's actually a very big stuff. And you don't even also, you can even put them in menus. Now we have some metadata. So in your like, Giggle uh, effect, you you have some metadata where you say where you want it to in Git menus. So you can put it and you can search for it. And uh, yeah, so that's important stuff. Uh, Yeah, sure. Well, that's that's yeah. Sure, yeah. The other sure yeah, 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 yeah. Because when you used to, okay, well, like the old style GIMP, it was even before 2.10, right? Uh, people used to have like Gaggle uh, plugins, and so you have a, a, a UI dialog, and you put settings, and you say okay, and then it's it's. Yeah, or sometimes you have like really small preview, like on the on the dialogue, like something like, oh, is it good? And you say, okay, and then you wait for five minutes and then you get the result and say, ah, it's not good. Control Z, like undo and retry everything. So, okay. So, Gaggle operation is, as you saw here, it's like, first it's fast if you, well, if you do good code, because it's still code, so uh, it can be fast. And Gaggle by itself is very good. You know, Gaggle is like, you can even work on image fast, uh, bigger than memory because it it handles the whole stuff for us. So it has backend and everything. If it's bigger than memory, it just goes uh, to a, a disk backend basically. Uh, but you don't, we don't even have to handle this kind of stuff. But that means that you can work on very huge images. And Liam is an example of uh, such thing because uh, he is like uh, is scanning documents in like huge, huge stuff which are like bigger than the memory that uh, probably all of you have uh, on your computers. Um, so, but is on GIMP, that's the kind of stuff which are not a problem at all. It becomes slow, slower of course, but it just doesn't crash and it just works. So yeah, as I say, like, uh, yeah, Gaggle is really, really fine, uh, fine uh, software. Okay, the demo, I'm not sure what. Uh, so, uh, well, what's, hmm? oh, it's in the end. It's uh, more in future, uh, I mean, even though it's present also. Um, so basically, uh, there's a lot more stuff. Game 3 is like a huge, huge workflow. So I, I only put some of the like most like fancy stuff. And, uh, and so basically what right now we end the phase where like, we do a lot of bug fixings. And like some of last user interaction, uh, like stuff, like we say, we're not really completely fine with this to, to have something clean and like neat. 
and API stabilization. So the API still changes right now because there are some stuff. Uh, as I said, we care very much about uh, um, uh, backward compatibility. So we are breaking now kind of widely the API right now. But after this, we care that we won't break it. So that's why that's one of the big issue right now. The big stuff is that we want to have like a good enough API that after this, we we don't feel like we made a mistake. Uh, uh, so uh, so that's one of the big stuff that still has to uh, is happening right now. Uh, yeah, and we have also a few uh, space invasion fixes, even though this can also go later because that's just long term project. The space invasion project started like uh, ten more than ten years ago, so I think in two thousand twelve started. Um, yeah, around GIMP because it's not only code. GIMP is like a big community, so so one of the things you may have noticed is that we uh, uh, changed the logo. So uh, that's a project mostly led by Arium here, and uh, but was a, a team project because it's very important for us. That stuff was was made uh, as a team and uh, during meetings and uh, exchanging stuff on IRC and everything. So so the idea was so that's the old logo, uh, and that's the new one. Okay, so it's flat design. Uh, like you know, new trends and everything. Uh, we have to go flat and everything. So, so this and the, the brush is also a lot smaller because there were like a few design design issue with the old one, for instance, the long brush made that uh, if you do a square like this, actually, and you put it on the other logos of the same square, uh, GIMP logo, you uh, seemed very small. That was like a kind of design bug. Like, and some people were like, uh, we had reports about this. Like, people make screenshots of the logo in. Uh, in Windows, for instance, where you have like squares like this of uh, all uh, software of the same size, but like it looked like you have like a very small GIMP logo. Actually, the file was the same size, but because the brush was too big, they were like space white on, on the right, so it looked small and uh, well. And um, okay. but we it was very important stuff that it had to stay so to be something simple, very few colors, but also keep the same uh, like recognizability. We didn't want to go to like something uh, completely different. Uh, that was, uh, and also a lot of people in the community like the logo, like Wilbur. It's called he is called Wilbur or she. We don't know. Um, it's non she he, she is they are non-binary. So um, uh, yeah. So versioning, uh, we had this thing where uh, kind of semantic like versioning where we. Um, so it's three numbers, right? Uh, so for instance, the next one will be three zero zero. So the micro version, the last one, will be only bug fixes. The minor version will could be have new features, and the macro version basically it's my GDK updates. Um, so we uh, we kind of broke this into ten on purpose because people were like, oh, I, uh, there are no new uh, GIMP updates in six years or eight years. Uh, like for instance, two eight zero was in two thousand twelve, and uh, uh, two ten zero was in two, uh, two uh, nineteen eighteen eighteen, so six years. There were actually a lot of updates every uh, every two three months. We have updates, but it's bug fixes. So people kind of like when it's a bug fix, people think it's it's not work. So uh, so they consider that uh, GIMP development was dead. So we thought, okay, like for 2.10, we started to do like, we also bring new features even in micro release. So every few months we had new features. So now for 3.0, we're getting back to um, the same logic as we used to have, except that you now basically we are targeting the minor release. So we direct tar target 3.2. We may have like micro releases with bug fixes only, and uh, yeah. And one of the things which also makes it possible is uh, the infrastructure. We have a much nicer infrastructure nowadays with continuous integration and like packages in uh, Linux, Windows, and everything. And uh, and like when we make a release, it was like all made by hand with like we had long list checklist uh, like this. No, uh, no, we have the infrastructure which makes uh, Windows packages. And uh, table for sources, and uh, I have script to to take stuff directly from uh, continuous integration and and send them on the on the 
download server and everything. It's it's which makes which allows us to do much faster releases. Yes, yeah, so yeah, and um, much uh, nicer also like mirror infrastructure now, which uh, with Geo IP with it's it's with my mirror bits, which is a program by uh, uh, by the VLC team, which you may know. I guess everybody knows VLC, and uh, so yeah, and we have big community now. Someone like recently updated our books page on the website, which was kind of dead until now. So I made some script and um, we kind of organize it in JSON and stuff like and with generation of the HTML. So it's easy to count the number of good books. And uh, we had like 349 books, which were reported to us. So probably a lot more uh, in like a dozen of countries. Uh, and just for 210, apparently at least 44 books, at least 44 books were reported to us, uh, published of, about GIMP on 210. So yeah, we also want to try to do more spread screen. Like we used to only do them uh, on the minor versions. Uh, well, we could now if minor every every f few months, but like before this means the splash screen only change every six years or something like that. So now we want to uh, like feature more different kind of artworks, illustrators, uh, photographers, uh, designers, and try to to uh, find and change more from the splash screen. So yeah, okay. That's the founding is. Uh, we try to organize ourselves. Uh, I wanted to announce stuff, but it's not ready yet, so I'm not going to. Just it's work in progress, and we hope that we'd be able to do something uh, uh, nicer to like kind of uh, grow. But uh, kind of we are something which is like GIMP is very much a community project, so we're not company, we're not something like that, and we don't want to be. So that's something which was uh, the harder part, uh, trying to protect this by allowing us to grow and um, maybe someday we'll talk more about this part so we're getting uh, will in the last few years some contributors kind of walked a bit away even though they're still around but uh, but we also have new contributors uh, coming in lately uh, so um, uh, like about Bruno Lopez uh, is doing a lot of stuff on packaging like like Microsoft store and even he made an app email, but also let even just the continuous integration stuff. And uh, Warnest is a maintainer, or J Jacob Boerham, a maintainer of the GIMP documentation, which got a lot of love lately. It used to be kind of not in such a good state, except for translators. We always, since we rely on GNOME infrastructure, we always have translators, but the script and the contents text part was not in such great shape, but Jacob really took this over this and it, Getting a lot nicer now. We even like daily, daily updates on the documentation on the docs.gim.org is daily updated and everything. And uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, ways Alex SA uh, is like one of a Google Sum of Code uh, from two years ago. He made two Google Sum of Code as a, a contributor student, and now he does this here as a mentor. And, uh, and basically, lately is uh, after me the biggest, the second contributor, and uh, yeah. So we kind of get uh, a nice team. Uh, so the future, uh, well, we have now uh, on this on the website we have developer website now. We have actually I broke the roadmap in small roadmap because so Gimp I say is a community for it, and what it means is that we don't have like a hard roadmap. Well, there's not someone who decide for the others. We really, it's like roadmap is more like the other way around. People are interested in stuff, look, something will happen. So we say, then we put it in the roadmap to, to say that, it, to show people, but it's uh, more like in this way around. So uh, in the roadmap, I kind of have this small part, which are basically interest of current contributors. So uh, like uh, more non destructivities like, like uh, we, uh, I worked stuff on link layers and everything, and uh, which basically are, are layers which link other files and the uh, uh, space invasion will always continue. Better text support, we have like uh, another Google Sum of Code uh, contributor who is also who is doing now his second year, and we did a lot of nice stuff uh, with text support. Like uh, Liam already uh, talked about uh, him a bit uh, in this. Uh, uh, talk yesterday, 
So uh, and he's doing again, and uh, that's his area of interest. And so it's very helpful that uh, text tools uh, and text repos in general, because font and everything is where like a lot of stuff were bugged in our uh, in our um, dependencies. Uh, some parts are not that maintained anymore in the dependency, like. Uh, uh, and we kind of walk around this now with custom code, code basically. So there are fonts what, which went uh, uh, loaded, now are loaded, and in a bunch of other free software, they, they rely on the same dependency. And, uh, yeah. and But for us, it works. For others, no. Uh, yeah, so UX improvements are something we really care about. So we are really working on like, and uh, actually, it's a lot with Arium since it will be the next talk. We'll show a bit what we do. And uh, so since I, I work with someone who actually uses software every day, every uh, hour of the day, uh, well, uh, I get all the complaints possible. So, so yeah, so that's something we, we like just try to improve the software with, to make it usable. So yeah, extensions, that's something which we want to make even an extension platform eventually where people can, like Firefox, you know, you can install extension in single click, install update and uh, search extensions. That's something we want to have in game too. Yeah, a lot, lot of stuff. Uh, animation, of course, you will see in the next talk. Animation game, uh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. That was a very old video I had like, it was like from 2020, uh, but uh, uh, basically uh, link layers. I um, so like you can have uh, you can link to another image and then you can update it. But okay, so the first part is just is just a PNG, so it's not so interesting. But just after this, well, but okay, I save it, and then okay, and then I get it. It's updated here. Okay, but that's that's uh, annoying part, but. Most interesting part is uh, like you can also like load, for instance, uh, vector images, which I do, and uh, and so like after this, I will open Inkscape. I can modify the image in Inkscape, and uh, and it automatically updates in my layer here, live. Uh, that's all live. That's not no trick, right? And uh, of course, it means also like uh, the layer I can scale it. It will always be nicely scaled because it's always scaled from the from the uh, uh, original vector image. So uh, that's a kind of uh, so this part never went into uh, GIMP because I never really finished all the little details and I went into like a, a more important stuff. But that's the kind of stuff that after three GIMP three is, uh, is uh, probably it will be in GIMP two three three two. I hope. Uh, this kind of stuff, and um, we'll also have probably uh, vector layers, which is like a Google Sum of Code. Well, like, like more than ten years ago, it was started, and it kind of betrothed in a branch. But like, um, well, Alex, I think, or maybe someone else, uh, one of the contributors recently tried to took over the branch and and made it work again. So that's uh, the vector layers are also yeah yeah I show that uh, yeah so that was very old video, but. Uh, it's in, still in a branch, and uh, yeah, that's um, okay. And um, our CTX is like so. Pippin, uh, Babel, and uh, Gaggle uh, maintainer is what time is it? Okay, good. Uh, Pippin, uh, Babel, and Gaggle maintainer is uh, also like his last baby right now. It's called CTX. It's basically a vector render library. Well, probably won't be happy if I just say this. It does a lot more, more stuff. Uh, it does a lot of stuff. But uh, like, yeah, vector render basically for us. And um, and I will show you something. Okay. So, okay. So I just show you this. Basically, he sent me this script. Okay, and. Uh, Zoom yeah, but the, show it just show. Ah, okay. If you, uh, can I zoom in in a text file? I have no idea. Control plus. Control plus. 
but just a script a control no it doesn't it's not text i don't know how much features it is uh okay I, I'm not, I don't remember what size it told me. Uh, let's say full HD. Zoom a bit. Okay. So, so there is. Uh, okay. So, there is this uh, setx script. Uh, so it's a Gagger operation, which itself. Uh, uh, calls setx as a backend. So, uh, so Gagger operation means a filter, right? So you have this, uh, it, it does some stuff because there's a default script in there. And uh, so he prints that the CTX logo. And where is, ah, sorry. Okay, uh, where am I? Okay, tag, control C. Um, if I can find my mouse, I have no idea. It's here. Oh, control D. Okay. And this is unlike, so it, it prints this stuff, and like there's a play button. Um, okay, so, so this is like rendered live uh, uh, by just, that's the demo part of the meeting. Ah, oh. oh, yeah, sorry. So, so I will just write, uh, r read what Pippin said while you watch it. It's time to tease the demo gods. Uh, unless there hasn't been li live demoing before, it's already information dense. Um, ah, okay, no, sorry. Maybe this is not interesting. Uh, so it's, it says, ah, yeah, currently uh, CTX as currently bundled with Gaggle doesn't take advantage of, um, of SIMD which are pr uh, processors, uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, um, sim, sim, sim D, sim D. Oh, yeah, yeah, auto acceleration CPU. So, um, so it could be even much uh, nicer. Uh, it doesn't have like the micro arc uh, C flag set, so it can be a lot better. Like, so what's his demo is that he's doing a lot of animation and everything with text and uh, vector, it's basically all vector renders like live live demo this in the script here so um, as i say it's like he cares also a lot of about optimization like he he does mostly all this programming in small uh, microcontroller cards uh, which have uh, like just no memory and no no processors uh, i mean very small memory is pro so like that's why giggle bubble ctx and everything is very well optimized So yeah, that's uh, that's part of the future of GIMP, this kind of project, uh, because we really consider that all the Gaggle Bubble CTX are part of the GIMP project, right? I think it's, it's finished, right? Okay. Ah, oh, yeah, because I, I'm on. Uh, okay, let's go back. But that's basically. Oh yeah, in future that's something which is which uh, which are very important to us is uh, I, I would like eventually that's also why I loved uh, the workshop we had yesterday with uh, organized by Liam is that uh, I, I we do believe that uh, like the free softwares graphics free softwares or non graphics software should work a lot better uh, integrating uh, with each other. Uh, like, uh, well, uh, Alium used to work for, for 10 years with uh, property software, like a very, most very, very famous suite that doesn't need to be named, I guess. And uh, so one of the things which she really miss is, uh, uh, well, the well-integrated part. You can like have files and like bring them elsewhere and it does the right thing or, and, uh, and that's really something at some point, uh, Right now, we don't have a lot of time, which is why I didn't uh, focus too much on this in my development the last few years, but that's at some point when I get to free some of my time for this, that's something I really want to work with other projects. 
So really, uh, like, like basically what I s showed before is like, oh, I'm working on uh, Inkscape and GIMP in the same time and this kind of stuff is uh, something I want to do, but even more like maybe like a service where like a software could call another one. We do have something like that with Darktable, for instance. Darktable and raw therapy, for instance, for raw development. Right now, when you open uh, uh, an, uh, a raw image in GIMP, it actually calls Darktable raw therapy. You do your raw development in there, you close, and raw therapy send it back to GIMP. So right now it's all done like by, uh, because we are all friends, so they make special, um, uh, um, flag for us so that uh, we can they know we can call them and they bring us back the image but like we'd love to have something like more generic like a service you could like a software could like gimp krita maybe we'll say oh i'm able to process uh raster images and inkscape say i'm process vector images and kind of stuff and like could like any software could like call and say, I want uh, this uh, raster image to be processed and brought back to me after this. And then say, oh, what, what do I have in stock for you? Or uh, which one do you want to open? This kind of stuff. That's really, that's the kind of stuff we really, and animation too. Like GIMP has some animation. We use a lot of Blender too. Like sending uh, and like editing in GIMP, but video part editing in Blender, real time, no, no CD exports and everything. And uh, uh which waste a lot of time like this kind of stuff which is from for us something which we really want at some point in the future yep and that's it